Number four, eating camel's meat. And I said earlier that this is wrong. This is not a misconception. This is a fact in Islam that eating camel's meat invalidates your wudu. However, the vast majority of scholars and schools of thought support the opinion that it does not impact your wudu. So now we are at a fork of the road. Why would the scholars differ over such an issue? Well, if you trace back the origin, you'll find that in the beginning, according to Jabir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with the man with his father, he said that in the beginning, the Prophet ordered us to perform wudu from anything that was cooked with fire. So in the beginning, anything that was cooked, whether it was meat or vegetables, as long as it was touched, it was barbecued, it was grilled with fire, then you have to perform wudu of, from it. And then this ruling was abrogated. So it was mandatory in the beginning. Once it was abrogated, and abrogation is a naskh, once it was abrogated, then a new ruling came which stated that you don't have to perform wudu from anything that was touched by or with fire. Okay? Okay. Then we go to another hadith. And this hadith is in Sahih al-Imam Muslim, which is totally separate from the subject of the first hadith. In this hadith, Al-Bara ibn Azib and also Jabir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with them all. They say that the Prophet was asked alayhi salatu wasalam, with different wording of the hadith, of course. Shall we pray in the places where a herd of sheep stays? So it's like a barn. Can we, can we pray where sheep stay? The Prophet said, yes. Can we or do we have to perform wudu from eating mutton meat? The Prophet said, if you wish. Okay. Then immediately the companion said, can we pray in the barn where camels stay? The Prophet said, no. And then they asked him, can, uh, do we have to perform wudu from camel's meat? And the Prophet said, yes. So Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, for example, looked at the hadith. It's highly authentic. It's in Sahih Imam Muslim. We have no uh, 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 doubt in the authenticity of Imam Muslim's hadith. And then he said, okay, this is clear cut comparison between mutton and camel's meat. Mutton, if you eat it, it's up to you. You want to perform wudu, you don't want to, your wudu is intact. But camel's meat, the Prophet said, no, you have to perform wudu. The vast majority of scholars looked at this hadith of Jabir and Abdullah and said, yeah, yeah, but this was related to it being cooked. And Abdullah ibn Jabir, Jabir and Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father, told us that the last thing of the Prophet's instruction and command والسلام, was not to perform wudu of which what was cooked with fire. The issue of being cooked with fire and eating camel's meat <coughs> are two different separate things altogether. They're not related none whatsoever to one another. So you cannot simply cancel the hadith of Imam Muslim and say it does not impact your wudu. It does impact your wudu. Why? Allah knows. This is a command from Allah Azza wa we have to comply with. The funny thing is that people circulate a fabricated hadith. Not that it is a weak hadith. It is not found anywhere in the books of Sunnah, in the books of hadith. Somebody just fabricated it and said it and people hear say kept on repeating it. And the hadith states that the Prophet was with his companions. May Allah be pleased with them. And they had just finished eating 
camel's meat, all of them. They were, it was a feast, it was um, whatever. So they all ate from this meal. And one of the companions passed wind and it was audible. So he was embarrassed and it was immediately afterwards that the Asr prayer was called. So they all had to go and pray. And none of them needed wudu. So the Prophet ﷺ, just to save face of that person, ordered all of them to perform wudu. What kind of nonsense is this? Do you think that the Prophet ﷺ would burden his whole ummah for just a, cert, a, 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 a specific person who passed wind? Definitely, this is nonsense. And it's unfair to claim that the Prophet would do such a thing, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this hadith has no basis, none whatsoever.